In this problem, we need to solve the equation the square root of the quantity x plus 7 plus 5 equals x. Well, what type of equation do I have here? It is a radical equation. I have a square root in it. And how many square roots do I have? I just have one square root. So let's look at the steps for solving a radical equation involving one square root. Step one says isolate the square root. Well, looking at my problem here, is this square root isolated on the left-hand side? No, I have the five in the way, so I'm gonna have to subtract five from both sides of the equation because five minus five is zero. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to get the square root of the quantity x plus 7 equals x minus 5. So that is step 1 completed. Now step 2 says to square both sides of the equation in order to remove the radical. So I'm going to square the left-hand side. So I'm going to square the square root of x plus 7, and then I'm going to square the right-hand side. Now be careful, on the right-hand side, you have to put it in parentheses because you're going to square that whole quantity. And now on the left-hand side, what do you get when you square a square root? They undo each other, and you just get left with the radicand, which in this case is x plus 7. And that equals x minus 5 all squared, which can be done two separate ways. One is going back to basics. What does x minus 5 all squared mean? mean? It's just x minus 5 times x minus 5. And how do we multiply two binomials? You use FOIL. So first, x times x is x squared. Outer, x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Inner, negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And last, negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. So what does this simplify down to? Well, I'm going to get x squared. The middle two terms add together. Negative 5x and negative 5x is negative 10x. And then lastly, plus 25. That's the longer way of figuring out x minus 5 all squared. There is a shortcut for squaring a binomial that says take the first term and square it. So x squared is x squared. Middle term comes from twice the product. So 2 times x times negative 5 is negative 10x. Last term squared, negative 5 squared is positive 25. So that's two different ways of getting this expression on the right-hand side. So now we have squared both sides in order to remove the radical. Notice I have no more radicals left. Step 3 says simplify and solve the resulting equation. Well, what type of equation do I have here? Notice it's a degree 2 equation, a quadratic equation. So we want to solve it by factoring or the quadratic formula. But for both of those methods, you need 0 on one side. So I'm going to have to subtract x from both sides. And I'm going to have to subtract 7 from both sides, being careful to line up like terms. And then I have x minus x is 0, 7 minus 7 is 0, so I get 0 on the left-hand side equals x squared negative 10x minus x is negative 11x, and 25 minus 7 is 18. So now I have everything on one side written in descending order, 0 on the other. So I'm ready to try and factor it. And if these factors come to you quickly, great. But I'm going to show you the systematic method of factoring. So remember, we compare it to ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. In this case, a is 1. It's a simple factoring problem. b is negative 11. 
and C is positive 18. So I multiply A times C. I get 1 times 18 is 18. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 18 and they add to B, which is negative 11. Since they multiply to a positive, that says the signs are the same. And if they add to a negative, that same sign has to be negative. So I'm going to start with negative 1 and negative 18. They multiply to positive 18, but negative 1 plus a negative 18 add to a negative 19, which is not what I'm looking for. Does 2 divide into 18? Yes. So I'm going to have negative 2 times negative 9. And this is looking better. Negative 2 plus a negative 9 equals negative 11. And since A was 1, these are my two factors. So I get 0 equals x minus 2 times the quantity x minus 9. So I factored it. Two factors multiplied together equals 0. Set each of them equal to 0. So x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 9 equals 0. And adding 2 to both sides of this one, I get x equals positive 2. And adding 9 to both sides of this one gives me x equals positive 9. So I have simplified and solved the resulting equation. But don't forget, you must check for extraneous solutions. That means you have to take each of these and plug them back in individually into the original equation to see if you land up with true statements. So I'm running out of room. I'm going to put it on pause for a second. So checking initially x equals 2 in the original equation. So I'm going to get the square root of x, which is 2 plus 7. Both of those are under the radical. Plus 5 should equal x, which is 2. The square root of 2 plus 7 is 9. Plus 5, does it equal 2? The square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 5, does it equal 2? Well, 3 plus 5 is 8. Does 8 equal 2? No. Therefore, x equals 2 is an extraneous solution. So now let's check x equals 9. Again, plugging 9 in here and here in the original equation. Does the square root of 9 plus 7, both under the radical, plus 5, it should equal x, which was 9. So the square root of 9 plus 7 is 16, plus 5, does it equal 9? Well, what's the square root of 16? It's 4. Does 4 plus 5 equal 9? Well, 9 equals 9. That is a true statement. That means x equals 9 is a good solution. So this equation has one solution of x equals 9.